Okay, I wonder if I left food out for four. I don't know. Okay, I'm... Whoa, Dorothy. What's up? Uh, Dorothy? You won't get through the bar anytime soon. You can stop walking. Uh, what? Oh, honey. Uh, do you want anything? Uh, the usual, I guess. Uh, usual... Is she okay? She's really weird. What is she like? What's her usual? Isn't it like a... Is it the sugar rush? Let's give her a sugar rush. Hopefully that's okay. Sugar rush. Uh, this is nice. 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 Okay, you're freaking me out. What is going on with you? Hey, honey, how do you know what's real? Uh, how so? I mean, how do you know if what you see is an actual thing? How can you tell if what you see around you is actually happening? What tells you everything is not actually a fabrication? What tells me I'm not just a simulation in a computer? Okay, and those ponderings brought you to the bar? <laughs> what? Oh, I'm in the bar. Am I? Dorothy. Uh, so you're having a solipistic crisis of some sort? Solip what? <laughs> Solipsism. The theory that the self is the only thing that can be known to exist. You see, that's another thing right there. That word. Solipsism. What the hell does that even mean? Where the hell did it come from? Well, solus means alone, and ipse means self. Yes, but how did it come to be? Do you expect me to believe that a lot of people just randomly decided to make noises? And decide, hey, let's make this noise mean this. It doesn't make sense. Words don't make sense. I've been repeating words for a long time, and they've stopped making sense. Why? Calm down, Dorothy. That's just semantic satiation. Stop making up words, honey. <laughs> and then there's this counter. How can I be sure the counter is really here? Uh, it is. Please stop tapping it. Hold on, just making sure. Wow, she's... Whoa. I'll have something to throw at her. Let's make her a drink. Shall I just get her completely trashed? What about a blue fairy? I don't know. Four of these. One of these. Optional karma train. Get it in there. Stop tapping the counter so much. I'm, I'm this close to throwing this at your face. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, so let's start from the beginning. Since when did you have this existential crisis? Uh, since earlier today, I think. But I don't know. It was all too sudden. I was thinking about everything that happened from a week ago until now. How much fun I was having. How much I loved everyone around me. And out of nowhere, the thoughts started piling up in my mind. What is love? What is fun? Are those feelings real? Is this all real? Am I real? What tells me I'm actually in a body? What if I'm just some computer somewhere thinking it has a body? What if I'm just a human girl in a comatose dream? What tells me that you're real? Eh? For all I know, I might just be a figment of someone's imagination. Or they're just an AI simulation in some computer that thinks it's human. I've been there, Dorothy. That existential doubt and crisis, that uncertainty about whether or not things are real. It was a couple of months only, but uh, I remember having panic attacks and scratching my arm just to feel something. But the panic attack gave me a rush of adrenaline, so I couldn't feel the scratch and the fear got worse. Okay, what did you do to get over it? Oddly enough, I read a book. The Last Rain in the World, one of my favourites. At one point I cried with the book and I realised I was crying over fake things, the story and its characters. I didn't care less for them because they were fake. Why not think of reality like that too? Even if I'm a figment of someone's imagination, I'd still care about you. That's what I told myself at least. It wasn't immediate, but that focus helped me. Yep, I like that. Hey, can I take this drink? I made it for you. Thanks, okay. Oh, she's poured it over her head, okay. <laughs> uh, why did you throw it on your head? Uh, to feel something you made. And? It burns, and it itches a bit. I'll get you a towel. Uh, delivery for Dana. Oh, I've been here before. Oh, it's this dude. It's Mr. Mario. Welcome back. I got a delivery for Dana Zane. Who's that? Uh, she's my boss. I'll get it for her. Right, sign here, please. It's the big package. What's she bought? What has she bought? You should open it. If it's something perishable, maybe it will need to be refrigerated. 
Let's see. It's a, a wiener. <laughs> a really big wiener. Sure. Hey, honey. What's up? The big package had a big wiener inside. <laughs> what will your boss do with such a thing? Uh, I don't know how she'll cook it. How she'll chop it up? Honey. Seems the wiener is too big to eat correctly. <laughs> Stop it. <laughs> Maybe you could prepare some right now. What do you say, honey? Do you want some of your boss's wiener? <laughs> Oh, uh, Dorothy. Seriously, Jill. She's making the jokes. <laughs> and you're the one trying not to laugh too hard at them. Anyway, we all know if we dare cook this without her permission, she'll hang us upside down. She'll hang me upside down. Yo, Jacket Boy, what's your name? I'm Mario. Come, Mario, I'll buy you a drink. On the job. <laughs> you might have another delivery, you know. Uh, this is the last one, actually. I'd accept your offer. I'll have a sunshine cloud. How about you? I'm good. A sun sunshine cloud, that's it. What we got? Two Adel Hides, two Bronson Extracts, optional Karmatrine, on the rocks, blended. Oh yeah, he likes the girly drinks, doesn't he? It's good that he's being true to himself now, because he was trying to be manly for no reason before. Here you go. Hey, uh, call me Dorothy. You can also call me Darling for the right amount. <laughs> yeah, Dorothy, why did you buy me a drink? Just to let you know, I don't swing that way. Uh, what way? Lilim? I'm a man's man. I like men, okay? <laughs> Not that there's anything wrong with liking women, but, uh... Oh, don't worry about that. I wasn't hitting on you. I was thanking you. Thanking me? Your package let me see honey here laughing like an idiot. It's easier than you think. Mm-hmm. <laughs> That made me happy, and I don't know, it fit with what she was telling me earlier. I'm more calm than when I entered. Uh, glad to help, I guess. Well, duty calls. Bye, Mario. Bye, John. Bye, honey. Enjoy your big wiener. <laughs> uh, get out. Just get out. <laughs> okay, she seems like a nice girl. I don't mean for it to sound like I, uh... I get it. Don't worry. You like guys. We're clear on this. Speaking of, you like motorcycles, don't you? I do, yeah. Have you been to the Motor District? I spend all of my free time in the Motor District actually, why is that? Is it true what they say about all the illegal races going on there? You're not a cop, are you? As far as I remember, no. <laughs> well, I mean, there are illegal races, but there's also a semi-legal league going on there. Semi-legal? The authorities acknowledge that there's races going on. They don't know what goes on in them, however. Modified engines, casualties, substance abuse. The illegal ones end up being safer in the end. Hmm. Have you heard about a biker called Christine Love? Miss Love, of course. Everyone knows who she is. What about her? Is her gang as dangerous as they say? I don't know. No one knows. Excuse me? They look intimidating enough, but the truth is that nobody has ever faced them directly. Moreover, nobody wants to be the one that gets beaten to a pulp if they turn out to be what they seem. So her gang's just there, menacingly doing their own thing, not bothering anyone. <laughs> Okay. Uh, do you want another drink? Mm, piano man. Okie dokie. Piano man. Two, three, five, five, three. All on the rocks. Mixed. Um, piano man. Yeah, this is nice. This will sound weird, but do you believe in replobots? Repl what, what, what? There's the belief that some Lilim out there are designed to perfectly replicate a particular human. That someone or something replaces those humans with such Lilim. Thus they call them rep Replobots. I can't even say that. Replobots. <laughs> okay, you know a lot about this. Uh, I don't. It's in most magazines nowadays. Well, it's the first time I've heard of it. What about it? On my way here, I almost ran over my neighbour. He just showed up in the middle of the street. And I say almost because he moved really quickly out of the way. Then I went to deliver a package and somehow my neighbour was there almost immediately after the whole thing. And he was there the whole time. Maybe it was someone that looked like him? He had the same looks, clothes, mannerisms. Trust me, you know a perfect replica when you see one. And you saw the kid Lilim here. They could easily pass off as humans. There are even Lilim idol singers nowadays whose voices can pass off as human. 
They could be passing off as humans under our very noses, replacing us little by little. Uh, at this point in time, I doubt that. Lilin behaviour is a bit different. You can easily tell someone's a Lilin because they seem... How do I put this? They don't care about risk and danger as much as we do. They treat risks with a lot more leniency. Still, be careful. Keep an eye out for uncanny doppelgangers. This guy is on, like, Paranoia Street. I'm leaving. Thanks for everything. Uh, yeah, please come again. What's your take on the Reprobot thing? Do you believe in them? Do you? Not really, but I asked you first. When I was in high school, I had this irrational fear of aliens. I was paranoid they would come. What would I do? I remember I lost lots of sleep because of it. Uh, that doesn't answer the question. Let me finish. After months of fear, I reached a conclusion that might as well apply here. It's useless to be afraid. I'm but a simple woman. I wouldn't be able to do shit against them. So I'd rather live without being afraid. Because the memories of not being afraid will be my only solace when the nebulae crabs invade. Uh, I mean, when the reprobots come. <laughs> Jill, are you still afraid of aliens? Uh, what part of it's useless to be afraid didn't you not catch? Right. I'm back. Anything happen? You got a wiener. <laughs> I discovered I have the sense of humour of an eight-year-old. Did anything new happen? Yo, <laughs> trash me. They brought you a package. Oh yeah, my curated wiener. It's a gift from my folks. It was delayed in customs, but here it is. You guys want some? <laughs> Jill can't handle it. <laughs> That's a new one. Alright, sweet. No mistakes. I got me some real money now. All good, all good.